everyone, this is Eli from checkit.com here with an Adobe Premiere CC tutorial on everyone's first favorite day of the week, Tutorial Tuesday. That actually took me quite a few takes because I kept wanting to say second favorite day of the week. But anyway, <laughs> it's been about this long since I've made a tutorial and I'm super pumped to be back. I hope your day today is going A-OK -okay and everything in your life is going smooth. I might do like an update video on Friday or something to say what's been going on with me because I don't want to waste anyone's time because today we're going over something pimp diddy. Setting up Adobe Premiere keybinds and like initial setup and basically what I use in Adobe Premiere because to check it actually just got sponsored by Gigabyte and Gigabyte sent me this Arrow 15X and I just installed a fresh copy of Adobe Premiere on it. If you guys just installed Adobe Premiere, that is perfect. If not, just reset your settings and we're just gonna build from the ground up. But anyway, if you're just here to see the keybinds, I'll pin a comment down below that says all of the keybinds so I'm not wasting anyone's time. All right, so with that, let's jump right into the tutorial. Drop that intro. Okay guys, so starting off, you're gonna wanna go to chichichekit.com slash downloads, of course, and unpack the file that I gave you. It'll have the full Premiere project file that I'm giving you guys, so you guys can reference that, and it'll also include this GoPro walk footage. If you guys wanna use it, you can. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is open up Premiere and go to the new project tab, and I'll show you guys how to set up this project real quick. So, um, new project, name it what you want. I'm actually going to We'll browse and just put it on the desktop. Let's just right click, go new folder. We'll just call this, uh, what, like keybinds? Sure, why not? Select it, everything else just leave default, but the capture format, make sure it's on HDV. I know a lot of people, if you watch other tutorials, they'll be like, oh, this doesn't really matter, doesn't fit. Back in the day when I was in fifth grade, when I started making videos, you recorded everything to tapes and the capture format, one is DV, which is standard definition, and HDV is high definition. So just, just for me, just for me, change that to HDV, please. I'm gonna sidetrack, anyway, hit okay. Now that'll open up this new project for you. And the first thing that you're gonna want to do is make sure that you're over on the top here, it'll have your workspace options. Make sure that you're on effects because that's the one that looks the most like After Effects or like the workflow is kind of like a combination of After Effects and Sony Vegas. That's why I love to work in the effects, like the default effects panel. It might be in learning when you first get in, but just go up there and just click effects and it'll change it. I do like to swap between color and effects, like when I'm doing color grading or I'm working on the color of a sequence, I'll swap over to color and then I can mess with all of the features on the right there if you look over on the right. But for the most part, when you're editing the video, doing your effects and all that, anything besides color, I just stick with effects. So that's the first thing you wanna do. The next thing you wanna do is make sure that when you make a new sequence, you have a 4K option. By default, Premiere doesn't have 4K. And nowadays everything's in 4K. Your iPhone films in 4K, like that's important. So you can hit Control or Command N and that'll bring up a new sequence. Let's go down to 1080p for now at 30 frames per second and hit OK. Then if we go up to Sequence and go Sequence Settings, we can edit this sequence and make it 4K. If you're at 4K 60 frames per second, if your camera can do that, then you're gonna wanna hit 60 frames per second right here. By default, I'm just gonna make it 4K at 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. I film at, at 24 frames per second for the most part, so I'm gonna make this one 24 frames per second, mostly because this is my settings, but do what you need to do. This is completely customizable. Now 4K is 3840 by 2160. You need to type this in by hand because it doesn't automatically come with it and everything else you can leave default. Now we can move on to importing our footage. Now if we double click in this blank canvas area, it'll bring up a search window and we can go to the desktop and find the GoPro walker wherever you saved it to. 
then hit open. Then if we just click and drag it over to the right, it'll ask us if we want to change the sequence settings or keep the existing settings that we already have. If that wasn't filmed in 4K, we can just go keep existing settings. Then we can size it down or size it up according to what we need. And to do that, all you'd have to do is click on it, go over to motion and bring down the, the drop down menu and then hit the scale. Yeah, see, it was in 4K. I don't understand why it was saying that it wasn't. It's kind of weird. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to undo that because it was already perfect. It is 4K. I don't know why it was thinking it wasn't. It's so weird. But anyway, guys, so we've imported our footage and now we can start going through all of the keybinds one by one. So to bring up the keybinds menu, what we're going to do is hit Control Alt K or Command Alt K if you're on a Mac. And this will bring up your keyboard shortcuts right here. So the basic idea is going through and searching for the commands that I tell you. And then we're just going to replace them by clicking and dragging those commands onto each one of the keys and then I can kind of explain why I chose to move those. That being said, let's get started. First is the A key, and we're gonna just type in zoom in. You see that? Right now it's set to equal, so we're just gonna click the, the X right there to get rid of that. We're gonna click and drag it onto A. And now if we click on A, we'll see that it is set to zoom in right there. Then we hit OK. Now if we hit A, look at that. It zooms in. I don't think I have to explain why that is useful. It's like can zoom in really fast command or control alt k once again to bring up that menu again next is zoom out and that's set to negative so let's click the x there's another way you can do this you can just click on the sh underneath the shortcut next to the zoom out and just type s and it'll save whatever commands you write on your keyboard while that is selected um, or you can just click and drag it onto the s key up above there but we're gonna hit ok and now s will zoom out so we can hit a zoom in hit s and zoom out that is super important that's why i start with that every single time let's bring back up the key binds menu by hitting controller command k you're gonna get really comfortable with that <laughs> by the end of this tutorial you will next we're gonna go to the d key and we're gonna replace that with ripple delete so if we type in ripple we don't want ripple edit we want ripple delete so let's get rid of that we can just click in here and hit d and what the ripple delete tool does this is like one of my favorite tools out of all the tools in adobe premiere so real quick i'll demonstrate what this tool does just by using the razor tool here and say we wanted to cut through right about we want from where my hand is grabbing so let's just cut that and then go forward and then cut from right here where the trash can is all the way to right here and hit V to go back to the regular move tool. We have all of these different cut clips here. And as of right now, that's super annoying to have to delete. If I just hit delete and then drag this all the way back, that is super annoying. A lot of room for error and not efficient. So what we can do instead is hit this and use the ripple delete tool by hitting D and that will just move everything from the point of the edit back so it'll delete and move all of the other clips backwards without losing any of the edits any of the effects any of the keyframe to work it's all still there and it's awesome so same thing here select hit d for ripple delete and look at that now we have a nice cut video you see that nice smooth transition dope all right Let's keep going. <laughs> so the next keybind that we want to search up is for the F key and we want shuttle right. So what shuttle right does right now it's set to L. Let's actually delete that and just set it to F by clicking and dragging and then hit OK. Now what shuttle right does is if you hit spacebar to play the, the footage and then hit F, it just fast forwards. It speeds up by I think like 10% each time or like half speed each time either way it speeds up in increments so if I hit play and then hit F once it's pretty fast if I hit it again it double times hit it again it's super fast and this will just allow you to watch through your footage very quickly with the touch of a button okay so moving right along controller command okay now we're gonna type in add edit and right now it's set to control K that's so that's so mafia that's so annoying dude like that who wants to do that every time you want to add an edit that's 
just silly to me. So we're just going to set it to C to add edit, hit enter. Oh, I guess you can't hit enter. Just hit OK. I thought you could hit enter. Why can't you hit? That's super weird. Anyway, if you select the footage and you hit C, it adds an edit at that point, just as if you were to use the razor tool and just to what you have selected. Now, say I drag and drop this below, though. There's a different tool that we need to do that. So let's uh, hit controller command alt K. And the next thing we're going to do is add edit. And what we want to do is hit shift C and shift C will make that edit go through the entire clip, no matter how many pieces of footage you have here. Like I'll even demonstrate that shift C, move this up, move this down. I guess I don't have to even do that. But anyway, if I want to add an edit through here, I drag the timeline indicator here to, to where I want to make the cut and then I hit shift C and it just makes a huge cut. <laughs> yeah, pretty sick. Okay, so moving on, control or command, alt K. Now we're gonna type in track. Oh, there we go. Track select forward. Now I don't set the track select backward tool to anything because I never really use that. What I use a lot though is the track select forward tool. So if I click that, I'm gonna set that to E. And then I'm going to, oh, I was going to hit enter. I don't know why that's not working right now. I think that's what I was doing before. It's kind of weird. If we just uh, hit E now, it'll bring up that tool and you can click anywhere you want and it'll select all the clips that are included above and below where you select. So if I select right here, it'll include this part and not behind there, even though the edit has it overlapping. It's, it's interesting. You, you'll get used to it, but then you see how if I select right there, it included everything so I, I would recommend just kind of practicing you see where I clicked it's like it, it has to do with where you're at when you click that uh, from where it selects so yeah uh, it's just a useful tool to have and then if you hit V you're back to home <laughs> all right next is the step back keys so step back oh not knack step back all oh, right there step back one frame so by default it's left and right the arrow keys which is really good to have like i would keep it that way so let's select to the right of it select that little box we just created and hit q for step back and hit ok and what that does is if you click the q button it will step back one frame for each time you click and that still works with the left arrow key as well but you don't want to have to take your hand from this area over here on the left and go all the way over here. That's that's not smart. That's not working smart. That's not working efficiently. Let's go control alt K or command alt K. And now we're going to set step forward. So if we just type in step, there's step forward one frame, select to the right of that key bind, select the key bind and then hit W. There we go. Now hit OK. And now we can step forward and step back one frame. And coupled with these other commands that we already have, like the zoom in key hitting A, we can get super close and then step back and forth and get very precise edits like right here. Oh, I like that right there. Hit C. It'll cut it. OK, step forward. I want to cut all these clips. OK, hit Shift C. Boom. Very precise. It, all of these put together are amazing. <laughs> okay, so we're at the final two keybinds that I, I want to set for this video. So let's hit controller command K, go into here. The, ne the next ones we're going to edit are the Z and the X keys. Um, for the Z, what we want to search up is video trans position you see that by default it's set to control d and you can always keep these other ones if you want i'm literally never going to use that and that is actually a good way of using literally not <laughs> not the sarcastic way like i literally have never used control d ever what i like to do is just set the video transition to z and then uh, hit ok and by default it'll take whatever is set to your default transition so video transitions here if we drop down and go to dissolve you'll see that cross dissolve has a blue box around it but say you want an additive dissolve to be your default you can right click it and then go set selected as default transition 
Um, I keep it to cross dissolve just because that's the easiest. And what that does is you see how the, the arrow changes if I hover over it here. If I select it, then I hit Z. It will now easily apply a nice smooth transition by default, whatever your default transition is. That is super important because that saves you lots of time than having to go to the right and just select and cross dissolve every time. You can just hit Z. The next one we want to go up to is Controller Command K and type in, maybe just transition will work. Apply audio transition, there we go. Now, I like to do Shift Z. Oh, I didn't do it. Shift plus Z. Hit OK. Same concept, but with audio, Shift Z. It'll, it'll apply your default audio transition, which you can get to by selecting the down arrows in your effects panel over here. It's set to constant power, which is basically a fancy way of saying another crossfade, but for the audio. Very nice. The last key <laughs> I want to talk about is the X key. Control Alt K. Go up to the X and type in delete. And I'm just going to select to the right because I still like to use the delete key itself. Now I'm going to hit X. OK. And what that will do is just like the delete key, if I hit X, boom, I can just start deleting everything that I want to delete. So nice. Zoom out. Oh, I don't like this clip. X. Boom. Oh, but I, you know, I really want want this to be moved back. So I better hit delete, ripple, delete, ripple, delete, <laughs> ripple, delete. That moves everything forward, man. It's just the combination of all these, you know, and the stepping forward here. It's just the general workflow becomes so much easier, at least in my opinion. Now, all this you can take with a grain of salt or you can go step by step and copy or use all of these keybinds that I use. Um, if you're going to be following my tutorials, I highly recommend to use my keybinds because it might be confusing when I tell you what commands I'm using. And you guys are like, what? Mine's not like that by default. This is why. So um, the last thing I want to tell you guys some useful tips and tricks to kind of uh, help you guys remember. Just keep in mind, Control Alt K or Command Alt K brings up the keybinds. That's important for when you're trying to go through this. Maybe you guys didn't know this, but say that I make a bunch of edits here. Using the up and down keys moves precisely between all of the clips. Super nice, really useful. The last thing is Control S, <laughs> the save button. Remember to always hit Control or Command S. You need to always save your projects. With that, guys, this was just a basic tutorial to tell you guys all of my keybinds. Um, I hope you guys learned something. Thank you so much for watching the tutorial. Please leave a like if it helped you out. Leave a comment if you can. I leave all my favorite comments at the end of the video. This video won't have them because it's been a year. But the next video, I'll take all of my favorite comments from this video and put them at the end of the next one. So lastly, if this helped you out, make sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. I haven't done this in a while, but I promise I'll get better and better as I continue to make these videos all over again. I used to be OK at it. Uh, now I suck, but I'll get better. I promise. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with me. Hope you guys had a good time and you learned something. With that being said, I'll see you guys on Friday. If you guys are driving anywhere between now and that time, please drive safe, man. The world's crazy. Okay. I love you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.